Hello, my laser peeps. I'm here with the Laser Pecker LP4, and today we're going to learn how to work with the rotary accessory. We're going to learn how to use the rotary accessory to etch on glass with and without rotoring. I will also go over how to focus the laser and frame the project on clear glass and how to focus the laser and frame the project on marked glass. We will do this with a dollar store glass, black dollar store tempera paint, a cheap dollar store brush, a piece of paper, dollar store painter's tape, and dollar store glasses cleaner. That's enough of my face for now. Let's get into it. Let's look at how to focus the laser and frame a project on clear glass and glass that we are not going to rotate. This is the rotary tool. The rotary tool can be adjusted up and down. This dial right here helps set your project angle. I will loosen this adjustment knob and then I'm able to adjust the angle of the project. Since I want a straight project, I will set it at 90 and then tighten this knob. Your rotary tool will hold the glass in this claw. This claw needs to be adjusted to the proper grip in order to hold the glass. Doing this is easy. You'll notice the rotary tool moves. To stop it from moving, depress this button and turn the tool. Once you hear the click, the tool is locked. You will then pinch this tensioner right here and turn it to open this claw. Once the claw is open wide enough to hold your project, turn it the opposite direction. Once this is in place, you may then depress this button again and it will release the mechanism. This roller has little tabs. Those tabs slide into the grooves on the roller base. Here you will find a switch. Turning this switch to lock will stop this from sliding. Turning it to unlock will allow it to move. Stick the glass into the claw, place it where you're comfortable, and then lock the roller. Once the glass is on the roller, you can adjust the height of the bottom of the glass with this knob. This cheap Dollar Tree glass is not terribly well made. You can see the glass rotating upward and downward. When I engrave, I'm either going to pick the high side or the low side. I am going to avoid starting in a section that will cause the glass to dip up and down. Place the rotary tool onto the base under the laser pecker. If you think you need to, you can use a support pad or foam. I'm here on the Laser Pecker app. I've got my Laser Pecker connected via Bluetooth and I have a simple thumbs up in my project. I used fill to make sure I have a nice solid thumbs up. Let's go ahead and set it up on the glass. I am going to press preview and you are gonna see the focus and framing light are nowhere near my glass. Let's go ahead and adjust our project. I'm going to turn on center point by touching center point, and you'll see that blue light is the center point. To get me started centering to the glass, I am centering to the rotary tool. If you can't see it, you can use this right here to make the laser brighter or darker. We now need to focus our laser. This is the focal lights. Notice where they are. They are going through the glass and onto the base below. We need to do something to allow us to see that light. I am going to place a small piece of blue painter's tape over the glass. We can now see both the framing light and the focal light. Let's bring up that center point again and look where it is. Let's go ahead and focus the laser by bringing it up. We will stop when the red lights touch each other. My machine is at full height. However, 
my laser is still out of focus. When you've gone as high as you can go and you can't focus the laser, you'll need to install this riser. Installation is easy. You'll need to unscrew the laser pecker from the bottom. Do hold on to her, she's a little top heavy. Look for this notch right here and line it up where the laser pecker was. Screw that in place. We will then attach the laser pecker onto the new mount of the riser. It should look like this. We will go ahead and turn our preview back on and our center point back on. And you'll notice it's now way off. We will have to go ahead and readjust the entire roller. I like to start with the machine a little lower. This gives me a more focused center point right here on the roller base. Here again is the laser focus. I've placed my painter's tape on the model and I am going to raise the laser pecker again in order to focus that laser. Thanks to the riser, we can now go high enough to bring these two lights together and our laser is focused. Here is our center light, here is our laser. With the laser focused and center roughly identified, I'll click on preview area. We're now looking at a preview of the project, which is way too big. I'll simply take this object in the slicer and make it smaller. I can then drag it around till I have it roughly where I want it. And there we have it, a roughly centered glass, a focused laser, and a framed project. However, this is a clear glass. We are going to need to mark it before burning. I'm going to mark it by simply painting washable tempera paint. With the tempera paint, you'll see it's doing exactly what we want it to do. It's absorbing the light rather than having the lasers and lights pass through the glass. To double check your framing and your focus, you can simply take a piece of paper and stick it over the glass. You can see the laser looks good and the framing looks about where I want it on the glass. Now let's go over how to set up a project on a glass that we will rotate. The interface and process will be different. Before we move forward, we will want to make sure the rotary tool is turned on. You will need to tap settings right here and you will look for rotary extension and touch that to make sure it's turned on. We are now going to set up a project using the rotary tool. The framing and scaling here is different because we will be rotating our project. I'm going to make just a small thumbs up on this side of the glass. The first thing we need to do is orientate it properly. The left side of the phone is the top of the glass. This direction is the top of the glass. This direction is the side. Touch your model and move on to preview. It now wants to know the diameter of this glass. That tells the laser how much surface area there is around your glass. I will use a cheap digital caliper. I've got a reading of 55 millimeters. I will enter that in and press next. Unlike traditional engraving, where the framing is a square or rectangle or something similar to that, the framing on this glass is this section all the way around the glass. The height of your model is this blue line right here. This is the height my thumbs up will be. If I tap the art right here and make it larger, you will see from top to bottom the engraving got bigger. 
if I tap and hold and move it down, you will see the rotary tool is turning the glass to that new location in your framing. You will drag this image to the place on the glass where you would like it to burn. You will then need to adjust the size while using this blue line as a reference. Here at the top of the screen, you can see zero to 160 millimeters. The model is currently 61 by 71 millimeters. By touching these arrows right here, I can go bigger or smaller, and you can see on the glass itself, the blue line getting bigger and smaller. There it is big, there it is small. And as I move it around, you can physically see this framing moving around the glass. And right there is my burn. If I want to see the rotation around the glass for this project, I touch scroll. Scroll is now rotating the glass to show me the entire burn area. The thumbs up will take place this size and that length. When your project is where you'd like it, go ahead and press next. I'm using new engraving settings. I am touching the SVG. I am choosing 450, 2K, 100%. I'm putting my depth at 35% and one pass. You may need a greater depth. You may need a second pass. This depends greatly on the type of marking material and the glass you're working with. I can't give you exact numbers. Don't be afraid to be conservative with your depth and run a second pass if the first pass isn't strong enough. Put your glasses on and press start. without moving the glass in any way. Have a close look at the burn. If you feel like it might not be deep enough, gently paint over it again without moving it in any way and tell the app, okay, repeat. This will run another pass in the exact specifications of the original pass. When you're happy, remove the glass. I'm now going to remove the paint with Dollar Tree Glasses Cleaner. And there you have it, a thumbs up etched on glass. You might notice a lot of random burn on this glass because it turns out getting the shot while filming glass is quite difficult. And there it is. We've successfully etched a glass with a laser pecker LP4. I'm Mr. Greg, and you're on 3D Rundown.